primary focus is, uh, is obesity and therapies of, uh, for the treatment of obesity and diabetes and cardiovascular disease. The fact of the matter is, is if you decrease your food intake, your body becomes more energy efficient. If you increase your exercise, your brain gets driven to have an increased appetite and it really counterbalances itself and makes it very difficult to lose weight once you've gained it. Uh, it's not simply uh, personal choices. The drives in the brain, uh, so you even, even under situations where you can control your appetite, your energy expenditure simply goes down to the point where some people can actually decrease their food intake and actually gain weight. That's why it's been really important to find therapies for obesity. Obesity contributes significantly to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, all sorts of respiratory disorders. Uh, we've had many successes on many different fronts. Uh, and on the obesity front, we have, we have worked with companies to design drugs that allow, that will cause weight loss, causes inhibition of appetite, it increases energy expenditure, even in these complex models. So this gives hope for new drugs in the future that can allow for weight loss in a safe uh, manner. There has been this dogma that obese women give birth to obese children, and there certainly is that contribution. Um, but in the human setting, it's difficult to differentiate the obesity versus the diet versus the background genetics. In the non-human primate, we can control all of those situations. And the key findings that we have had is, is that the high-fat diet itself causes abnormalities in the developing fetus that persist into the postnatal period, causing a risk for metabolic disease. So this means that even on our leanest animals, if they're on a high-fat diet, we have complications later on in life. The, the critical factor here is, is that we can control the environment. Um, we know how much the animals are eating. We know what their activities level. Indeed, we do induce sedentary lifestyles because we are, that is a contributing, major contributing factor to obesity in the United States. But the non-human primate also has the complexities and social behaviors that humans do. Uh, humans eat when they're happy, they eat when they're sad, they eat when they're mad, they eat when they're angry that makes that a, a hard environment to live in to lose weight. We also have a tendency to snack all day. We love tasty treats, um, and so it's not always the meals that matter, but it's that snacking throughout the day. We can mimic that exact model in the non-human primate and dissect out which components are contributing to the disease and which components we can treat and help the animals lose weight which translates into human health. My hope is, is in the immediate future, uh, within literally within the next couple of years, we will have several new drugs on the market that will help patients lose weight. They, the patients themselves are obviously going to have to have some control over this and they're increasing their activity and, and watching what they are eating, but these drugs will help them lose that weight and help them uh, control their appetites. On the other side of it, I mean, we have already looked at the impacts of diet on pregnancy. We are designing new interventions to help women during pregnancy that may provide a long, lifelong health improvement for their baby just by altering their diets or just providing uh, appropriate nutrients during pregnancy. And that can have a, a significant impact worldwide.